Hi, it's Paul Munder from Production Expert. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the new Krotos Studio Pro and using the edit mode to create our own performable preset. For those of you who might not be familiar with Krotos Studio, it's a platform for designing custom sound effects quickly and easily. Krotos Studio Pro includes hundreds of presets across multiple categories. Essentially, it covers almost every use case. Before we get into creating our own preset, let's just look at the basics of how Krotos Studio works. So if I choose a preset, for example, this Suburbs one, It'll start playing back and we can, from this performance area, adjust the sound. So in this case, we have two XY pads and I can alternate between birds over here. Maybe I want fewer kids playing, but more dogs. Or maybe I want more traffic, less birds. Maybe I've had enough of the dogs now. Move it over to kids playing. And then if I stop this, that will generate a sound file, which I can just drag to my timeline and then obviously play it back. The specific controls which you see in the performance area will be dictated by the type of preset that you have loaded. So for example, if I load up a footsteps preset, we're going to see something a little bit different where we can now trigger them like this. Or they can be triggered from a MIDI keyboard or even this MIDI keyboard window in Pro Tools. One of the major new additions in this Pro version is this new edit section. You can actually edit any of the pre-existing presets, modify them, change the samples, adjust the level, adjust the pitch, and importantly, you can add your own samples in. Or even better, we can create our own preset entirely from scratch. So let's go back to the factory default and see what we can do. We have four tabs, each of which has up to four engines. So I'm going to add an engine to this. There are three choices, Granular, Reformer AI, and Sampler. For this, being an ambience, I'm mostly going to use Granular, but a little bit later on, you'll see how the Sampler one is used. So let's find a sound. I've got an urban park here. And in order for this to be controllable in the way I want it to be, I have to go over here and choose an appropriate set of controls. Exactly what you choose completely depends on what you want to do, the type of sounds that you're triggering. In this case, it's an ambience, but I also want two buttons. And the exact reason for this will become apparent shortly. So I'm going to click on autoplay and loop. And straight off, this will, of course, play back. But at the moment, it's just going to play continuously. And when it gets to the end, it'll repeat. I want something a bit different to that, though. I want this to be able to control the level relative to other sounds, which I'll add shortly. So maybe I want this park sound to be over on the Y axis. In order to do that, I'm going to take its level control here, drag it onto this Y axis, X, Y pad option here. And perhaps I want this to be called park. Now, how much is it going to fade off when it's on the other side? Well, clicking on this, that's this depth control. So if, for example, it was in the middle, it would barely change at all. It would just drop off a little bit. But if it's all the way over here, when I move over to the x-axis, it'll be completely gone. I'll show you that. See, it's completely gone there, but a lower depth control, it stays there a little bit. So perhaps I'll have it somewhere closer to the middle like that. That's good. Now we'll create another engine, make another granular one, and add another sound to it. Maybe it's this one. So it's a stream. I want this to auto play and loop. This I'm going to associate with the X axis on this left hand pad. So drag this over there and then we'll name it. So I'll call it stream and maybe just change this depth control to a little bit higher like that. So it fades out a bit more when we're at the other extreme. Okay, let's give this a go. So there's a park. We've got the stream over here. That's all working very well. And I'm just going to add two more things to this. So we'll add an engine, make it granular, and find another sound. And in this case, I'm going to go with something quite different. Let's go with a siren. And I want this to be over on this pad. So we'll choose to drag the level over to the y-axis over here. And I want the option to completely fade this out. So I'm going to have this all the way at 1. That means if I'm either over here on the x-axis, it won't be there at all, or at either corner, it also won't be there. And this is important because when I add the next sound, I also want the option of having that completely gone if need be. I'm going to rename this to Siren and then click on Loop and Autoplay and try this out. 
Yeah, that works. More towards the park. Great. One more sound for this. Another granular engine. This time, going to go for something different. You know, keep it interesting. Let's add a helicopter. And going back to this section here, the remaining x-axis, I'm going to drag this to that. And I'm going to set the depth to the maximum so I can completely fade this out. Rename it helicopter. And before I forget, I just need to enable down here, autoplay and loop. Less of the part, more of the stream. Helicopter. Sirens coming in. Less stream. Okay, so that's interesting. When I'm over on the top right, it's both the siren and the helicopter. When I'm at the bottom left, neither will play back. You can imagine how useful this is going to be in audio post, but we've also got these trigger sounds here. I'm going to go to tab two, add an engine, and this time make it a sampler. And you can add more than one sound to each of these. So I've got some duck quacks here. Let's add those in. And we'll try this out in a second. If I just go to here, though, you can see the three samples which I've got loaded onto this. How they play back is governed by various controls here, including this one. We have random and robin. Random would do exactly what the name suggests. It randomly triggers them each time you hit one of these buttons. But robin will actually cycle through them one, two, three, you know, and back to the beginning again. Let's try this out. Okay, and then the next sample will trigger when I hit this again. And the next one. More of the helicopter. Excellent. Well, as you can see, Krotos Studio Pro is an extremely powerful tool, especially for sound design and audio post. Not only does it include thousands of presets, but also they're fully editable. And as we've just seen, you can create your own presets entirely from scratch. I hope you found this video useful. For more information, head over to the Production Expert blog or visit krotos.studio. Thanks for watching.